everybody? I know it's probably gonna take a couple minutes for everybody to hop on. Um, my husband used all of the eggs <laughs> in the refrigerator for his like monster breakfast this morning. And so he should be back in like one second with the eggs, which I need <laughs> for the recipe today. Anyways, how is everybody doing? Hello, hello, hello. Hopefully having a great start to your weekend. In case uh, you are just kind of tuning in and wondering like what the heck I'm gonna be doing today. Haven't seen any of Pommy's uh, posts about me doing a live today. I am making chicken Parmesan stuffed shells. I might actually just prop y'all up while I'm waiting for Shane to get back. I mean, I'm sure y'all have been there before too. <laughs> But let me tell you what we've got going on over here so far. So I have got two packs and honestly, I'm not sure how many I'm going to need, but I decided to get uh, chicken tenderloins instead of chicken breasts. I was going to get chicken breasts, uh, but I thought these were like the perfect size, saves me a little bit of time, and it doesn't look like I'm gonna need to pound them either, which I would have normally done for regular chicken parmesan because they look pretty thin, thin enough for me. So we've got those. We've got our breadcrumb mixture, which is a combination of panko and Italian breadcrumbs. I just had a little bit of panko left, so I figured why not use them up? This will be eggs in just a moment. <laughs> and then we've got flour. Uh, so I don't know if y'all watched the Food Network growing up like I did, but who was it that always said, I don't know where you buy your flour, but where I get mine, it does not come seasoned. So the first thing that I always do when I'm gonna do a breaded chicken is first season everything. I'm gonna season the chicken, cause I don't know where you get your chicken, but I don't get mine breaded. Um, I'm gonna season the flour and I'm gonna season the eggs. Also gonna add a little bit of water to the eggs too, just to kind of loosen it up. It'll be easier to coat in what is then an egg wash. So, I'm just gonna go ahead, healthy pinch of salt here, and here, just prop you guys up for a second. <laughs> People fighting trolls. Hi, everybody. Hi. Oh, it's so nice to see everybody. I spent two hours on the phone with like computer support today, so I had a great start to my day. By the way, I don't know what kind of salt you guys use, but I use kosher salt. And the last couple times that I've been to the store, they've been out of just like the regular kosher salt. So I bought this like coarse ground, ground kosher salt, which seems to work. It looks like it's more like flaked. They're definitely different size, but um, kosher salt is what I always use for cooking, for seasoning my food, unless I'm like adding salt to finish something right before I eat it. <clears throat> I'm turn that off for now. I went ahead and got my pot of water going so that it's ready for us when we need it. I'm just gonna add a little bit of salt to the breadcrumbs. I'm sure they're a little seasoned, but probably not as much as I would like. Uh, is kosher better than pink? Good question. You could use pink salt too. I think it's just a, a matter of the, um, the size. So if for you, I'd say just be consistent with whatever you're going to use. For me, I'm just used to the size of this. So I'm, I know how much to put into things. Uh, but if your salt is smaller grain, it has more surface area, and so you might need to adjust the size. So it, it depends if it's more of like a coarse grind on the, the pink Himalayan salt or if it's like a really fine. So just keep that in mind. You probably need a little bit less if you are using like a really fine grain salt. So I'm going to go ahead pepper these up. I've got like a super extra pepper grinder, by the way. I'm sure you guys see it from here down when I'm doing my videos. <laughs> nice. All right. Gonna just 
flip all of these. Gonna keep one hand clean so that I can sprinkle, even though I'm gonna have to wash them anyways, but just to reduce the amount of time, times I have to wash my hands. By the way, thank you so much to Pommy. I like, gotta be honest, like I hadn't really used Pommy in a while and then we uh, we connected. I did a video for them. If you guys haven't seen my Methaldine Alfredo, or not Alfredo, my Methaldine uh, Marinara Mac and Cheese, uh, I worked with Pommy for that. And I used these chopped tomatoes. It's like finely chopped tomatoes and what I've, had done prior to that is buy like a whole can, like a can of whole tomatoes. And I'd had, end up having to blitz them with my hand blender because my husband doesn't like chunky tomatoes. So um, <laughs> this is actually perfect because he can do like uh, salsas that are pretty smooth. And this is like that consistency. So it's great because it only has one ingredient, tomatoes. And I normally like wouldn't use a tomato sauce because people add so many things to it, like seasonings. And I like to be able to control all of that. So I'm gonna just come over here and wash my hands. I'm gonna bring you guys all around my kitchen with me. I hope that's okay. <laughs> really getting to know each other. Rebecca, you love the chopped tomatoes? Me too. It's really, it's the best and like, all I'm gonna use from now on, honestly. So I just make a huge mess every time I go to stick the hand blender inside of like this large can of whole tomatoes. Like it always comes out the sides and then I have to clean up. Super annoying. Super duper annoying. Almost annoying is like my husband not being back yet. <laughs> For the love of everything. All right, so we're just gonna pepper these up. All right. Okay. So now that we've got our chicken seasoned and everything, I've got my breadcrumbs and my flour seasoned. I have to dredge the chicken in the breadcrumbs, then the, then the egg wash, and then the flour. Because it's looking like my husband is taking longer than expected, um, I'm going to <laughs> answer some questions if you guys have any right now. So go ahead and ask away. If you have any questions, I am more than happy to answer any of them. Shane has to twirl these noodles on the spoon for us when it's done. <laughs> yeah, don't ask him to do that. He is not an expert. <laughs> Popol Cup. Oh my gosh, I don't know how to pronounce your handle, but thank you so, so, so much that I'm your favorite. That's awesome. By the way, I'm just going to go ahead and put these in. I had brought this up to a boil, and this is actually really important. So I want to show you guys how I season my pasta water, because I think a lot of people skip this step or miss it. And P.S. I'm going to do it a little bit differently than you might, because I believe it's because of the stainless steel pot that I have. It has a copper bottom, but it's very, very temperamental when I add salt. So just a little bit at first, see it goes crazy. <laughs> and then I'm really going to salt it like a really, really nice amount of salt. This is your only chance to season your pasta on the inside, right? We can season our sauce and everything that we're gonna be putting on top of the pasta, but we can't like sprinkle salt on, on top of it at the end when, when it's all done. So this is the only chance to do that. So I've got here some jumbo shells. jumbo shells. We're just going to throw them all in here. And the package instruction says 15 minutes, but because we're going to be kind of cooking them again after they're in the boiling water, we are going to cook these for, I'm going to say 12 minutes. So I'll put them in, I'll stir them, a few seconds will have gone by, and I'll set the timer for another 12 minutes because they are continuing to cook. All right, 
right, timer. Timer is set, okay, moving on. I just heard the garage door. Shane for the win. <laughs> Not for the win, mega fail, Shane. Mega fail. <sighs> Get our salt back over here because we are going to use it in just a second. Oh, do we hear him? We hear him. We hear him. Is he rushing up the stairs? Is he rushing? I can't hear him rushing. <laughs> can't hear it happening, guys. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the heat on my stove top to medium just to get the pot heated up a little bit. All right, handing it over to Shane. All right, should be facing me. Is it facing me? Yes. Okay. All right, so got some eggs here. So we're gonna do a quick egg wash. Just, I don't know, two or three eggs is fine. Do three, cause it's kind of a lot of chicken. asks any questions uh, while I'm cooking, Shane, you can go ahead and read them out loud. If you can pronounce their handle, you can read that out loud as well. But I know some of y'all's handles are a little difficult. Camperera Rara Rara Zina asks, do you always boil your shells before starting on the sauce? Um, not always, but what I'm going to do is, since they're going to be done before the sauce or the chicken, I'm just going to drizzle them with a little bit of olive oil, and that'll prevent them from sticking together. That'll be after I take them out and drain them. Okay, so let's go ahead and get our chicken breaded. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a wet hand and a dry hand. <laughs> so I've seen other people do this before. Of course, I'm putting it in the wrong one to start. I guess I should switch these. All right, so dry hand, wet hand. Dry hand. This will prevent like all of like the like monster hands that you can get sometimes. <laughs> Tony Comis asks, why did you add water to the eggs? Adding water to the eggs kind of thins them out so it'll help like coat around the chicken. Otherwise, it's just too uh, together, like too kind of gloopy. Hey, if people are sending a request to be in the live video. No. Okay. <laughs> Sorry guys, we can't, uh, we can't add anybody in the live video today. I guarantee I'm going to get this wet dry situation screwed up at some point, but we're gonna see how long I can go. Once we have enough of these to fill that pan, we'll go ahead and put one batch of them in. And we'll get the other half done. Annabelle Hinn asks, can we add milk instead of water? Um. I've never tried that before, so I don't know if there would be a reason why the milk wouldn't work, but you know what? Cooking is an experiment, and so why not? You know, why not just give it a try? I would say to use 
like a thinner milk. If you're going to use milk, you could use like a skim milk or whole milk. Don't, don't use like cream or anything like that. Just feel like it would make the mixture a little bit too thick. And my concern would be it uh, sticking. See, I almost messed up just now. Uh, all right, I feel like this is like half of them. Just about. It's actually really working. Who's the who's the influencer that does that? It's a flexible dieting lifestyle. He has the wet hand, dry hand method and it works. Saving my life, honestly. Okay. All right, let's see how many we've got here. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. No one more. I'm sure is feeling all right right now. Let's actually get it up a little bit higher. I'm gonna put some olive oil in the pan. You can come over here, Shane. Don't be afraid of me. <laughs> Just gonna add some olive oil to the pan. Right. Nah. Oh, hi, kitten. Let it completely cover the pan. All right, I think feeling all right. Yeah. Tuesday at 11 asked, do you feel like food is your big calling in life in terms of the work you do slash your impact on people? Um, yeah, I mean, I feel like I have a few passions and food is a big, a big one, so you know, at this point in my life, I think that that's definitely uh, what I love to do. And it seems to be not only entertaining people, but helping some people too. Like for instance, I get a lot of messages that from people that struggle with eating disorders that um, I help them like enjoy their food again, which is great. So yeah, I feel like right now, but you know, we're all on a journey. We all kind of evolve, so we'll see where life takes me. Maybe it won't be my calling forever, but for right now I'm into it. <laughs> I mean, it's not a bad gig, right? It's cranking up the heat at this point. Cat Baloo asks, Oh my God, what's that baby's name? His name is Butters. His name is Butters, full name Butterscotch. But Butters from South Park if anybody's familiar. By the way, thank you to Pommy for giving me this apron. It like is a really great holder of a uh, kitchen towel for me. <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna add these in. All right, I'm healing, here in a sizzle. Right here in a sizzle, that's, that's a good sign. Lara Liv Blom says, when did you first start cooking and how did you learn? Butters, get down! Cats land on their feet. <laughs> um, I started cooking when, I don't know, I guess when I was younger, my mom was always a really good cook, still is a very good cook. And the Food Network was like always on. I'm gonna just add a little bit of oil in these little crevices here. I really want them to be sizzling. All right, get in here. Just a little bit. Oh, 
All right. So now we can come back here and do the other, do the other half. So yeah, when I was younger, I would watch the Food Network. I'm one of those people that uh, I kind of learn as I see things. So I would just watch how they were doing things. And when you're watching people do the same things kind of over and over again, a lot of cooking processes are the same. And so I would just over watching like rep repetition and repetition, repetition, I learned how to do things. So I wouldn't have even like necessarily done it myself, but when I went to like pick up a knife or, you know, go to make a sauce, I just kind of had a little bit of, um, little intuition, I guess, on how to do it because I've been watching Food Network and my mom for so long. You know, your parents kind of have their own way of doing things. And so they give you little little tips here and there for how, how they like to do it or like things they might not mention on TV, especially when things go wrong because, you know, they don't really show a lot of that on TV either. <laughs> The middle one is egg batter, yes. Yes, the middle is an egg wash. It's just some eggs whisked with some salt, a little bit of water. Rebecca.slee asks, when did you start cooking with pommy products? I mean, I've, I've used pommy products um, several times in the past. I, I think like I've, I've used a lot of different brands, um, but again, like when I when I just recently worked with them and discovered these finely chopped tomatoes, which are like basically saving me um, a couple steps because I would normally have bought like whole tomatoes. All right, real quick. I'm gonna go ahead and drain our pasta. I had set it for a couple minutes under what the package instructions said. So I'm just gonna go ahead, get all those out, and going to just drizzle with olive oil so that they don't stick. Just gonna get those quick toss. So those will just be over here waiting for us. Turn this off. Go ahead and check on our chicken. Oh yeah, look at that. Can you get those a flip? Uh, middle is hotter, so what I'm gonna do is switch these babies out. Sides are fine now. Juliana Bradica asks, what is your favorite pommy product that you always have to have on hand? Uh, definitely finely chopped tomatoes. Like it's literally what I'm gonna be using from now on for sauces, anything really. Ooh, that one got a little darky. All right, let me put this one over here. Tony Comes asks, what chef do you admire? do I admire? Hmm. Um, I really love Anne Burrell. Uh, if any of you watch the Food Network, you know Anne Burrell. I just think she's no nonsense. I like that she properly seasons her food. She doesn't like take any shortcuts. Um, I really love, well, I love Scott Conant and his restaurant Scarpetta. Had to do a shout out to him. Uh, Alex Barnicelli, of course, love him. You guys know I was on the Food Network show, Guy's Food Network show, so I admire him for a few different reasons. Um, who else? I'm trying to think of like less like famous people, maybe like, well, like less like Food Network people, I guess. Turn that down a little bit. Oops. Wash my hands now that we've got all the chicken breaded.
You guys can see the next Heisman Trophy winner out of the corner of the screen. Mm -hmm. What's that score over there? <laughs> That's looking pretty good. <laughs> Has to get it in. Has to get it in. All right. This is great. I love having a kitchen towel attached to me. <laughs> and somebody had asked about the noodles before. I'm actually really glad that I did the noodles early because we are gonna need to be handling them. And I don't want to be handling them when they're really, really hot. So this is gonna give them a really good chance to cool off a little bit before we have to be touching them actually olive oil if you see that your that your chicken isn't browning enough it's probably because you don't have enough fat in the pan the golden brown is going to because be because of the fat fat content turn that down a little bit kind of like get it extra hot for you guys so. All right, move this plate off the floor. All right, so I got a new cream plate out for my chicken when it is done. I don't need any of my breading stuff anymore. So I'm just gonna, as Ann Burrell would say, thank you for coming. It's just in the thank you for coming pile. We don't need you anymore. <laughs> All right, gonna just clean up my workspace. I'm kind of OCD, I don't know how you guys are, but I have to like clean as I cook. And if I am in a tornado of, a, of cooking, like sometimes when I'm filming and things are like very like time sensitive, there's just stuff everywhere and it stresses me out to no end, so. Lara Livblom asks, do you add salt to your palmy tomatoes? Yes, very good question. And yes, I definitely, definitely add salt. The only ingredient in the tomatoes that I use is, toma or, yeah, is tomatoes. So I'm just gonna wipe this pan out real quick. The before and after. Over here. Right. Okay, so let's get our other round of chicken. In. And again, I'm not sure how many pieces I'm gonna need. I just bought two packs just to be safe. And whatever I don't use, I will use in another way. My husband is a, what do you call it? Hoover? Bottomless pit. Bottomless pit. Garbage disposal. Garbage disposal. Mm -hmm. uh, another man. thing that I wanna do, because I've been handling the chicken with this, um, it is gonna continue to cook, but I'm just gonna give it a rinse. Gonna wash. Back in business. Okay, so while we are waiting on the chicken, we can go ahead and get our chicken mixture ready to go. So finally on to the important part of today, right? The tomatoes. Again, these are just the finely chopped tomatoes. They have a couple different flavors. So if you like onion, they have finely chopped tomatoes with onion. I think they might have another flavor too. Um, anyways, I'm going to, in this big bowl here, I've got two cups of shredded mozzarella cheese and I'm going to add two cans. Mm of the finely chopped tomatoes. Okay. 
Again, we're going to season with salt. I'm sorry, I was in the middle of saying before that salt is a very important ingredient. You have to add it to your food in order to bring out the flavor of the food. So for tomatoes, if you add salt, it's just going to make it taste more like tomatoes. It's gonna bring out the sweetness, the tartness, the tomatoiness. So we definitely wanna add salt. I'm not gonna add a huge amount because what we're also going to add is some Parmesan cheese. So I've got about a half a cup, didn't measure, doesn't matter. It's cheese, the more the better, right? Spaceman69101 says, that looks better than what I'm ordering later for my parents' dinner. It's their 50th wedding anniversary today. Aw, happy anniversary to your parents. That's great. And I'm sorry that you're not having a meal that you're going to enjoy, but <laughs> what, are, what is he ordering? Did you ask him? What, what are you ordering? I haven't asked him, but I think you just did. Oh, yeah. What are you gonna? What are you going to be ordering there? Campa Ra 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 Ozina asks, would you recommend Pomi's concentrated tomato paste as well? Yeah, I mean, I really like the Pomi products because they, they have very simple ingredients. And yeah, what, what, what? Spaceman's answer was KFC. <laughs> KFC, oh gosh. You know what? Some people just love KFC. I don't mind KFC. Shane, how do you feel about KFC? I just don't have it nearly as often enough to probably have an opinion about it. All right, this is still working. All right, so the optional ingredient that I've got over here, you all don't have to add it yourself. You can add red pepper flake if you have it. I bought this stuff like at the beginning of quarantine to make um, all vodka sauce, and I love it. It's this Calabrian chili paste. You can get it on Amazon. I have no particular brand or anything. I just really love Calabrian chilies, especially because they've got, well, this, um, it's kind of got like a tang to it. I love tang in my foods and it goes really, really well with the tomatoes. So I'm just gonna add, you know, a little, my husband doesn't like things too spicy, so I'm not gonna, not gonna go crazy with it. But, gonna mix all of this together. Spaceman said, that's what they asked for. I told them I would get them anything. <laughs> hey, it's their anniversary, right? They should be able to get what they want no matter what it is. Popple Cowpage says, are you self-taught cook slash chef? I, well, self-taught as far as like watching TV, <laughs> I learned it from the TV, so I wouldn't say that I like just experimented and learned everything on my own. I definitely learned things from watching other people. All right, so I just gave those a nice little flip. I'm gonna check these to see, hopefully they're done on the inside is the other thing. Aha, done. So, this is about the size, let me grab a shell here. It's about the size of a shell. It's gonna just be like aggressively sticking out, but that's okay. So we'll be able to stick like one of these guys. We could even like have them if we wanted. And it'll just fit right in there. So that in mind, I'm going to kind of slice these to that length. Maybe I'll keep one for reference over here. And we're just gonna toss them into our tomato cheese mixture. Maybe what I'll do is this. Put them into threes, kind of. Yeah, let's go. You can also do this with ground chicken if you want, but it's so much less chicken parmesan -y, you know? Having the breaded chicken is really the only way, in my opinion. But the ground chicken would be less steps. You don't have to worry about breading it or anything. Just throw it in a pan, 
with those ingredients and call it a day. All right. So I'll still leave one of these for reference over here. Yes. Stella Bella Healer Girl requests that you give me a bite of chicken. <laughs> if you can, to, what kind of word am I trying to think of? Transport yourself. No, not, not Stella Bella Healer Girl, as in me. Give me a bite of chicken. Give you a bite of chicken? Yes. Okay. I don't know, do you think he deserves it after using all the eggs earlier? I heard him in the kitchen making breakfast and I thought to myself, there's a lot of eggs in that container. I should be fine, I only need a couple. So I didn't say anything. My fault, really. Charlotte Vidland asks, why would you recommend pomi tomatoes? Wait, is it pomi or pomi? Pomi. Pomi, pomi, pomi. Pomi? That's a good question. Um, I've always pronounced it pomi, but I'm sure I will be corrected by, by pomi if I'm not saying it the right way. I'm just kind of coming in here and breaking up the noodles, just in case any of them are sticking together now that, now that they're uh, cool enough to handle. You, you didn't answer the question, though, actually. The question was, why do I like pommy tomatoes? Why would you recommend, yeah. Why would I recommend them? I just think it's a really good quality product. And this product in particular, the crushed tomatoes, I really like because normally I would buy a, a whole, uh, a can of whole tomatoes and I would have to puree them. I just think that those are the best quality when you have like a whole tomato that you're pureeing down instead of getting a tomato sauce. I really don't like getting like jars of tomato sauce, even when they're like just the basic kind. Um, and I would have to puree them because my husband doesn't like chunks of tomato. He really hates it. So I would have to, <laughs> I'd have to puree it, which was another step in the process for me. And, um, and then it would make a mess because I would have to, uh, you know, I'd stick a hand blender just inside of the, check for doneness here. Do a little tappy tap. I'm not an expert at this, by the way, but the firmer that it is, about more it bounces back, the more it's done. Anyway, so I'd have to freaking puree the, the tomatoes. It would make a mess. With this, I just opened the can. I don't even need a can opener. <laughs> I've either had boxed or these cans that just kind of uh, open without. So, yeah. All right. Blue Dot Dream asks, what are you making? We are making, and for anybody that's just joining, we are making uh, chicken parmesan stuffed shells. There we go. I'm gonna do another, didn't use this plate, that's okay. Going to just wipe the pan down again. It's about time for the tomatoes. We're gonna get the tomatoes simmering while we stuff our shells kitten. Oh, you guys will be able to see. This is our method for getting him off the counter. <laughs> All right. So I'm gonna bring this back to, well, it's still pretty much there. Just going to put a little bit of olive oil in the pan, just because I like olive oil. All right, I'm just gonna put. Get it to a nice low simmer. See if I'm able to put it over the burner yet. We good? Maybe? Okay. We've got it at about a medium low. Electric stoves are just the worst. Can anybody relate? <laughs> Gosh, gas stove would be so much better. Right, babe? Popelka Page asks, you make, or sorry, will you post this recipe on your page once you are all done? Um, yeah, so I'll post, I'm actually, don't tell anybody, 
Um, I am considering mukbanging this after I'm done cooking today. So if that's the case, I always um, I always post the recipes for for these videos after I am done. When I post it onto YouTube, I always include it in the description of the video for all of my recipes. So if you guys are wondering where to find them, that would be where. Again, we're gonna go ahead and season. There it is. All right, we're gonna season with some salt. If you guys like more, like I, I'm honestly perfectly fine with a simple tomato sauce like this, just some salt. And what I really like to do, and I'm stealing this from Scott Conan, shout out again to Scott Conan. Um, I like adding a little bit of Parmesan cheese and butter to my tomato sauce, but we'll do that right before we put the shells in. So we're gonna just let this hang out. I'm gonna use that as a spoon holder in the meantime. All right. So many uses. So many uses. All right, so not sure how many of these I'm going to need. Num num nums. Do one more. It's looking really good. I'm honestly impressed. Oh. Seems like an okay amount. If I need more, we'll add more. Alright. Play a game called How Many Dishes Can We Dirty in the kitchen? How many? Okay. So now that these are workable, I'm just gonna grab a spoon, like serving spoon size. We could just open these up, find a piece of chicken, and just cozy it up in there. And you can just do them face up. I think it'll look nice like that. You can do them on the side too if you'd like. It's your world. When I first started cooking, I, I always like had to follow recipes like exactly. Like I couldn't deviate from them at all. And it was a really stressful experience. Like I would have to get the exact ingredients if they didn't have them. Like I remember when I was in college, I would, there was a, uh, what is it? Ina Garden's recipe for like tuna, seared tuna with this like mango chutney. And it was the most stressful thing. And now thinking back to it, it's like a chutney. You have to make a chutney and sear tuna. I mean, there's like hardly any steps to that, but I made it so stressful. And so now it's like, I just have to remind myself and I tell everybody else, like there's no like necessarily right or wrong way to do things in the kitchen. I mean, it's so subjective. It's up to your tastes. Like even with seasoning, like I, I, believe in seasoning in a certain way, but maybe you don't like it that way. So you really have to find what works best for you. And more than anything, it has to be enjoyable. Like you have to like cooking. If you don't like cooking, then you got to change something about it. You know, not everybody likes a huge production when they're cooking. Um, there was another show when I was growing up, maybe she's still on, I don't know, called Semi Homemade with Sandra Lee, Sandra Lee. And I feel like a lot of families can relate to that show specifically. Like she would buy a lot of store-bought ingredients and then some fresh ingredients and she would combine them together. And at the end of the day, you know, hardly anybody would have been the wiser, you know, for dinner parties and especially with kids. So there's a lot of ways you can make cooking work for you. Nidzi2511 asks, which, in which, sorry, what's in the bowl in which you're mixing the chicken? Uh, so in this bowl, we've got two cups of mozzarella cheese, about a half a cup of Parmesan, two cans of Palmy's finely chopped tomatoes, these tomatoes. So I got two cans of that. We've seasoned with salt. And I've added some Calabrian chili pepper paste, but you could also add crushed red pepper flake 
if you want, um, really whatever spice, if you wanted to use cayenne, I suppose you could. Uh, and then if you guys wanted to add like fresh garlic to this, you could, you could do uh, sauteed peppers and onions if you wanted to. There's a lot, a lot of different things you could, you could add if you want, but I am a very like simple as best type of person. And since the classic chicken Parmesan really just is mozzarella, Parmesan, chicken, breading, I didn't really want to deviate from that too much. Meanwhile, you can stuff shells with anything. So if you wanted to do like, like my dad loves sausage, peppers, and onions. Oh, it's his birthday today and I haven't called him yet. Sorry, dad, if you're watching, it's been a long day. <laughs> I will be calling you after this. Happy birthday, John. Happy birthday, Dad. We love you. We love you. I feel like Sherry's watching right now, so hopefully hopefully she's got, got it in front of him. Maybe they'll... Have, have you seen any comments from Sherry? No. <laughs> These look so good. I don't want to toot my own horn, guys, but it's looking awesome over here. I think I might need to get another plate actually we might we might have enough to go ahead and put in eh, maybe a little bit more it's a large pot i'm gonna get one more plate with my filthy fingers Uh, there was one. L Hardy 87 asked, what kind of pan is that? Behind me? I believe so. Uh, we actually got these from our wedding registry. They are from Amazon. I think they're the Tefal brand. And actually really reasonably priced. I think the whole set was like 120 bucks. Or something but it comes with a few saucepans three uh, deep side saute pans and you see how deep the sides are they're freaking awesome um, the pasta pot and lids and I've loved them oh this is a broken one we're gonna say thanks for coming to that one <laughs> thanks for coming we'll eat you without the filling Hannah Strohschneider asks, where did you get those plates? Ooh, the plates. <laughs> the plates are from West Elm, actually. And I love them too. I especially love filming with them because they are not um, stark white. They've, they're like an eggshell kind of color. So uh, it's not like, I don't know if y'all are familiar with photography, white balance, that sort of thing. But it, it helps with the white balance and with the exposure. More the exposure, actually. How are we doing back there? Heat it up. Doing okay. Really, all we're looking for back there with the with the tomato sauce is for it to be hot, right? We want it to just be nice and warm for when we put these babies in. Blue Dot Dream asks, would you ever be on another Food Network show? <laughs> um, I don't know. I guess it would just depend on the situation. But to be honest, I really love what I'm doing now. I really love having like full creative control over my content, my channel, like the food that I decide to feature. And I don't think that that's something that I would really be able to do as much being part of a network, right? Because you have to end up kind of doing what they want you to do. Um, so I like kind of doing it on my own. Oh, we've got a kitten, kitten alert. Kitten alert. <laughs> oh, butters. Oh, butters. Oh, butters. Oh, you wanna show everybody that's where I film? 
That's the table, that's the backdrop. That's the whole setup, guys. Real, real professional operation we're running over here. Lara Livblom asks, is salt all you add to the tomatoes? Yeah, and again, like, y'all can add whatever you want. This is just my, like, super quick tomato sauce. And what I end up doing is just adding a little bit of butter and parmesan. Um, but when I'm making, like, you know, a fancy pants tomato sauce, I'll add fresh garlic, I'll add onion, sometimes I'll add herbs. I really love cooking simply though. I really like um, using few ingredients so that we can let those ingredients really shine. I don't like overcomplicating things with too many flavors so that you can't really taste any one thing. Uh, so that's just how I like to cook, but everybody's different and trust me, I've gotten plenty of criticisms for that, but that's okay. We're all different. So I'm just adding whoop, a little butter to the floor too. Add a little bit of butter. And I'll just kind of make, make this a little bit more kind of like luxurious even. Just to like coat the bottom of the pan. All right, I feel like we got enough down there. Yeah, one is, one's gonna be plenty. Okay. All right, so next we are going to put in our shells. Nearing the end here, guys. We can nestle them all in here. You can do this in the oven as well. Make a little pattern with them if you want. We're going around in a circle here. Get our other plate. I think I made a few more than I needed, but that's okay. exactly sure how much of this I'm going to need. The more important thing is that we cover these guys aggressively. Aggressively. I want there to be a full-on layer. Shane does not love cheese that much, so he's probably like enough. It's enough. It's enough. Please stop now. It's enough. <laughs> That's okay. We got more on the side for Shane. Mm -hmm. Yeah, why not the whole bag, right? Oh, yeah. Look at that. That's some chicken parmesan. All right, so now I'm going to pop the lid on this baby. I'm gonna bring the temp up just until I see some steam start to form and then we will reduce the heat again. And we're really just going to have this uh, cooking like this for a few minutes so that the cheese can get all bubbly on top. And then we are going to pop it in the oven under the broil setting just to get some color onto the top of it. Let's get it. Let's go, let's go. Meanwhile, just clean up 
few things in true me fashion. more shells we got over here. Maybe I'll fill some more shells for another round of this while we're waiting on that. There we go. And it looks like I can cut a few more pieces of chicken. There's actually a lot of shells in here. I wasn't sure how many there was going to be. I wish they would tell you on the package. It'd be helpful for stuffed shells. Butters, you look very comfortable. <laughs> Does anybody else have like really weird things that they say to their animals? Like, I don't know why, but everything's pluralized when I talk to my cats. Like everything. Makes no sense. All right, got any more brain busters over there? All right, gosh, this is gonna like, it's gonna make a lot of food. Shane's happy. Maybe if I didn't have eight eggs earlier. Eight. You had eight? I did. <laughs> this is what I mean, guys. Eight eggs. I'm fine. I don't need to tell him anything. Like, normally when I make eggs for us, I'll make him, like, five or six. And he had French toast. I don't know if you guys have seen, but I posted a new video today on my YouTube channel. French toast. So we had leftover French toast and eight eggs for breakfast slash lunch, I guess. But you'll have dinner. It's not like we're not going to have dinner. Lara Livblom asks, what else do you recommend using palmy tomatoes for? Oh, gosh. I mean, any place that you would normally need a tomato sauce. So for pastas, for meats, um, Jane, help me out here. What else do you use tomato sauce for? Uh, lasagna. Oh, lasagna. I like pasta dishes. Oh, you know, another great thing that I love is shakshuka. Uh, sometimes they're referred to as eggs in purgatory and it's just like baked eggs essentially. Um, so I will, I use like, I don't know, probably the smaller version of that pot. I've got a couple of them, depending on like, you know, if I'm feeding me or more than me. Um, I would fill the pan with one or two cans of that same tomato sauce and then crack a few eggs just raw inside of it. And you can add whatever you want again to the tomato sauce. Sometimes I'll do like any leftover meats that I'll have. I'll pop that in the pan first to let that like heat up, then I'll add the tomato sauce in. And then I just crack a few eggs right in the pan and I'll put it in the oven. And it just like kind of bakes inside of the tomato sauce. And then I'll take like a baguette or whatever bread I have on the side when it comes out of the oven, you like crack the yolks and you just like scoop everything up. One of like my favorite things. Pizza is another thing you could totally use it for. I mean, Meat, meatloaf topping? Meatloaf topping, yeah. Possibilities are endless, guys. Cereal? Cereal, no. Don't use it for cereal. That would be weird and gross. Sorry, Shane. If you eat it, if you eat tomato sauce with cereal. Who doesn't? No, I want to see you eat it. Well, fine. <laughs> Y'all ready for that video? <laughs> oh man. Let's let the steam build back up again. This is looking pretty good. Oh boy. 
<laughs> I get so excited. <laughs> oh, the tomato sauce is all bubbling. Oh, look at all that. You see it all like bubbling inside of the pan. Mmm. It's amazing. All right, we'll give that another minute. In the meantime, I'm going to start the, the oven on broil. Nothing in there, right? Sometimes I'll like have something in there and I just won't have remembered. <laughs> All right, let's forget it. That away. Thank you for coming, Phil. We have a few more. We have a few more we can make. Gosh, this is like a whole other portion. Shane, I think think I'm gonna have you uh, try some of these with me if you're willing to eat this much cheese. Just make another batch sans cheese for me. All right. You don't wanna taste it on camera for everybody with me? I can do that too. <laughs> I won't force you to. One, two, three. The others are kind of sad looking and falling apart. Thanks for coming. It's a nice day we're having. Cold. But it's nice. I'll take sunny. Especially since it gets so dark so early now. Well, not so dark, it just gets dark early. It's actually not too cold outside right now. Really? I stepped outside earlier because we had a package come and it was cold. <laughs> it was like, I don't know, like 11, 11 30. All right, got some extra chicken pieces in there. Oh, somebody asked me to feed you before. Yes, they did. Ready for a chicken piece? Yes. Does he deserve one now, guys? <laughs> Yum. Oh man, come, come look at this now. Come look at this now. This is what we're looking for. Alright. Look at that. Okay, now I'm just gonna stick this in the oven and we're gonna watch it. We are not leaving its side. Whole pan going in. Gonna grab one of these guys. P.S. These are awesome. I love like the little mini ones versus having like the giant ones. They're just too difficult for me. Almost like keeping this door cracked to keep an eye on them. The anticipation just killing you. It's killing me. I'm gonna move these over here. They will be for Mr. Shane.
How are we looking? Getting there? Close the oven, give it another minute. Ah, oh, all right. The moment is almost on us. We'll get to taste. And then again, I will be posting this recipe. I will be doing a lovely video with this after we're done here. Probably be a couple weeks before that is posted so don't uh don't freak if it's not there in a few days I feel like once it starts browning it like happens quickly so it like won't happen won't happen and then all of a sudden so you don't want to just be like, oh, nothing's happening. It'll be five more minutes. You shouldn't do that. <laughs> mm. And actually what I'll do while we're waiting, this clutter away. just grate a little bit more more cheese more cheese oh. mm -hmm. i always grate parmesan cheese fresh i never ever ever buy it in one of those pre-grated things no no shakers of parmesan in my fridge you will never see it there it's just not good i'm sorry if any of you use it it's just in my opinion, has way less flavor than off the block. If you're able to go to Costco or any of those like um, wholesale stores. Oh yeah, see, happens quickly. All right. Some nice color. All right. Make sure you use a pot holder when it comes out. Oh, look at that. For anybody that's like, oh, how do you get cheese pulls? Use mozzarella. You want cheese pulley mac and cheese? Add mozzarella. All right. It's gonna be like really hot. Oh. Well, look at the chicken. It's so juicy, did you see all that juice come out? That is gonna scorch your mouth. Oh. oh my gosh. So good. The chicken really is perfect. I'm so glad that I didn't pound it. I know at the beginning of the video, I said I had planned to maybe do chicken breast, cut them and pound them and then cut them. But doing the uh, chicken tenderloins like this, they're a little bit thinner. And so it lets it brown on both sides and continue to cook in the pan without being overdone. I'm gonna have one more bite. It's 
Stella Bella Healer Girl asks, could you skip the step with putting them in the pan and just go ahead and place in oven like in a baking dish? Oh yeah, so it'll just take longer. I could have done that today. Put them in a baking dish, popped them in the oven with the mozzarella cheese on for about 30 minutes and they'll brown and melt the cheese so you don't have to worry about it. But just for the sake of time today, I wanted it to only take a few minutes on the stove and a few minutes in the oven. So yeah, you could definitely, definitely just pop the whole thing in the oven. Mm. That's really good. put extra parmesan cheese on top and that's really really good man guys all right well i guess this concludes our cooking section segment cooking segment today uh chicken parmesan stuffed shells uh definitely recommend they were they're so delicious um again you can make them in the oven if you'd like not a whole lot of steps and if you wanted to uh, give yourself another shortcut, you could always buy pre-breaded chicken and just pop the pre-breaded chicken in the oven to cook or in an air fryer or whatever you prefer, and then add that to your tomato sauce cheese mixture. So yeah, you're definitely able to do a semi-homemade version of this one, but really easy to do it from scratch, as you can see. All right, guys. Well, again, I will be providing the recipe that I used today for you guys. If you end up having any questions about this video, this recipe about Palmy, you can certainly uh, DM Palmy or myself to ask. I do get a lot of DMs, so I'm sorry if I do not respond. Um, and Palmy will be posting this video uh, at some point. I'm not sure when. We're going to save this video once the broadcast has ended and they will uh, share it. So if you wanted to watch it back for any sort of techniques or just for your entertainment, uh, you can do that. All right, guys. Thanks for joining today. Shane, make sure you uh, save. When it asks you to save the video at the end, just make sure you click save. Uh, okay. You want me to do it? Yep. Okay. All right, guys. Let me. He's going to hand it back to me. <laughs> hey we did it we did it all right guys this was awesome thank you so much for joining today and i will be seeing y'all you know in social media land <laughs> have a great saturday guys bye